Okay. I am going to quickly, since again, I'm sort of over time and you'll have this, these slides, uh, quickly go over some breast MRI artifacts. I think that artifacts are important for you to be aware of in clinical practice, but also, um, you know, of course, very important for those who um, have to take their examinations because you will be tested on MRI artifacts. So, um, Breast MRI is technically demanding, and we know that. It requires excellent fat saturation, high spatial resolution, and rapid performance of post-contrast sequences. Patient and technical factors, it, it can result in artifacts and um, degrade image quality and confound interpretation. So um, it's really important to have the uh, exemplary technical parameters in place to really uh, you know, scan and to have a really good breast MRI. Okay. So the most common breast MRI artifacts will, are mo is motion, wraparound, zebra, RF interference, incomplete fat set, and incorrect coil usage. So motion is pretty self-explanatory, right? So it um, it can affect an entire study or just a few images. Uh, for, for trainees in particular, remember that motion always propagates in a phase encoding direction. And essentially, how do you fix it? Well, they need to lay still. They need to be very comfortable prior to the er their exam so they're not fidgeting during the examination. And then sometimes if the patient's really claustrophobic, they may need to be sedated. Wraparound artifact. This is where you have an undersized field of view and not all of the signal producing tissue is in the field of view, right? So this is also known as aliasing or phase wrap uh, because again, this occurs primarily in the phase encoding direction. So how do you fix it? You increase the number of sampling points in the phase encoding direction or you just enlarge the field of view. And that's typically what in clinical practice we do. We'll just you know enlarge that field of view, but that is an example of wraparound artifact. Zebra, which is known as moray artifact. Basically, you have signal that's produ signal producing tissue outside of your selected field of view and it wraps into your field of view. Um, it can also happen when poor magnet shimming causes a phase shift between tissue uh, within and outside the field of view. And so you get this black and white banding, okay? So how do you fix it? Well, you can enlarge the field of view, you can reshim the magnet, and apply phase oversampling. So I like this image because it, it demonstrates all the different kinds of, um, of our, the most common MRI artifacts we see. So you've got the zebra or moray artifact here in the middle denoted by this arrowhead. Uh, with this uh, other arrow, you see the wraparound artifact, the open arrow, uh, incomplete fat saturation. You can actually see some motion on this as well. I don't know if it projects well uh, on uh, when you are uh, looking at it, but there is some motion here as well. And then RF interference. There's some sort of interference in the imaging room. Is there a radio on? Is there a TV? Did you not get the door closed all the way? But essentially, you get a leak in the RF. You can have an, a leak in the RF shield that surrounds the imaging unit. So the RF signals penetrate this shield, okay? So that's how that happens. And then you can get these RF bands that look bright and dark. Um, so, and this is an example here of these bright and dark bands. So essentially you need to address the offending, offending agent. Make sure the door is closed properly. Make sure that the radio is off or the TV or anything that would cause an interference. And then incomplete fat saturation. This is seen more commonly in breasts with a higher percentage of fat. And basically the MRI imaging unit software mis and misidentifies the fat peak as the highest signal peak instead of water and then suppresses water instead of fat, okay? So essentially how you would fix this is review the location of the water and fat peaks and of the center frequency uh, automatically. Uh, Basically, your system software can automatically do this. You just need to review the location of the water and the fat peaks and make sure uh, that you are uh, suppressing um, the fat instead of the water. Okay, incomplete fat saturation can be fixed uh, as well. Uh, it can also be due to rather uh, field inhomogeneity. So how do you fix that? You can shim the magnet, which can be performed by your service engineer or tech at the console. Um, breast tissue can also be very 
close to your coil elements, which can cause incomplete fat set. So how do you fix that? You can add additional padding between the breast tissue and coil elements. Uh, and uh, you could use larger and smaller breast coils to also improve your signal to noise ratio. Incorrect coil usage. You might think this is silly, but this can happen where a body coil is used instead of a breast coil. And then your images look really, really grainy here because of low signal to noise ratio. So obviously the way you fix this is make sure you're using the right coil and really, you know, make sure you're using the right coil before you inject your contrast. Obviously that is incredibly important. Chemical shift artifact. So this occurs at fat fluid interfaces due to the di differences in the resonant frequency of hydrogen and fat and hydrogen and water. And essentially you get a spatial misregistration between the fat images, image and the water images. Now remember, this is the only artifact that occurs in the frequency encoding direction. Um, and it has to do with the 224 Hertz frequency shift between the two tissues. So of all the breast MRI artifacts, this is the only one happening in the frequency encoding direction. So remember that, particularly trainees. Okay, and then, um, as well for chemical shift artifact, another way you can fix, uh, particularly in chemical shift artifacts, one of the things you can do to fix it is increase the bandwidth per pixel of the imaging sequence. That would be uh, probably the most um, the most frequently uh, used route to fix chemical shift artifact. And then I'm just quickly going to rush through these. Again, most likely diagnosis, this is invasive ductal carcinoma because uh, this you know, could of course be an invasive lobular, but IDC is the most common breast cancer we see. We see that there is an enhancing mass here demonstrating uh, mixed kinetics. There is washout, a washout component. There is nothing here that's enhancing on your T1 non-fat suppressed image. The artifact, of course, here, this is motion. The patient is moving around. There's a lot of uh, signal loss here, uh, classically um, a motion image. And finally, diagnosis. This is uh, obviously we're uh, looking for silicone implant integrity. We see wavy lines here of this right silicone implant um, consistent with the Linguini sign, consistent with an intracapsular silicone implant rupture. I really appreciate